And as last year, we are going to see a fascinating battle up front, particularly. Let's have a look. So you've got Julian Majub on pole position, as he was last year, and he was leading right to the end until he got passed by Mark Walker. But what you'll see with Mark is he can't get off the line quickly. Uh, so that's going to be a big part of it. Ben Collins is on the second row, and as we look further down the list, you've got Rob Hubbard in the Vauxhall. He's back down on the third row of the grid. The Talbot and the Monarch uh, are back on the fifth row, and it's uh, a real mixture of machinery, as you said. The, the Delage GP Voiturette, for example, of Huey Walker, that is a little bit smaller because it was a Voiturette-style car as opposed to some of these big aero-engined monsters, particularly that Fiat. But that's qualified well this year. Duncan starting fifth on the grid. And then as we go down the list a little bit further, we've got the fairly remarkable Oakland Romano. Uh, Julian Grimway, he's competing in it for the first time this year because it was uh, being raced by another driver. Uh, the Bianchi, Luke Roberts, that's in 13th place. And as we work our way down the order a little bit more, we've got the Straker Squire TT racer and the Sunbeam 1620 and the Scat Type C racer, Targa Florio. Some wonderful names further down the list there. And then we get down towards the back of the grid. But who knows what's going to happen? Um, just keeping them running, even though it's only a five-lap race, is not always the easiest thing. Although several of these cars, many of them, have actually been driven here on the road from home to, to get to this uh, Goodwood event this weekend. That would certainly disturb your reverie as you're just cruising along, maybe on cruise control, and one of these comes past. But again, back to the car that's the middle of the front row of the grid, riding on board with Mark Walker. Lovely bit of chicken wire there just to keep his, his feet away from bits that are moving in front of him. But the vibration, watching the valves working away. And this is a car that's not so good at getting off the line. But yeah. once it gets the torque feeding through, 200 horsepower racer is very, very quick indeed. And as Ben pointed out last year, two five lap races and he won. One by 0.3 of a second, another by about half a second. It was exquisite. It was fantastic. But it was built as a land speed record car. So, of course, actually, acceleration off a line was not what it was built for. It was built for top speed. So getting off the line, it, it, it didn't matter when it was created if it did that fairly slowly. If you're racing, it's another matter, isn't it? No, entirely so. And this was the first car to achieve two miles a minute, therefore 120 miles an hour at the Florida Speed Week back in... <laughs> 1906. I still find it quite difficult counting to numbers that high when it comes to racing machinery. It is. No, and it's lovely that some of this machinery has been found and rebuilt over the years because sometimes a lot of these machines would have been destroyed uh, over the years because they were just people thought, well, what's this old thing? We don't need this anymore. And they would throw them away. But it's lovely that so many people have been able to recover them, sometimes rebuild them. So there is the Darak that will be starting on the front row. But if you're watching that at the start, you will see, I think, that he'll be passed by several other machines. And actually, Duncan Pitaway is behind him. So that's going to be interesting. They will be starting pretty quick. Once they're in position, they'll be getting ready to go. But you've got the big fiat of Duncan Pitaway is directly behind Mark Walker. Uh, Neil Goff is on the outside of the front row with the, uh, the crit, the KRIT, uh, with the Curtis motor, the aero engine. So some big powered machines up front. Yeah, and if, if the dunk, if the piece of Turing comes past, it's like being overtaken by a small block of flats, certainly if you're sitting like Mark Walker, a little lower in the middle of the front row. Every shape imaginable, a lot of horsepower. These cars, all 100 years and older, all set for the first of two races for the SF Edge Trophy. Here we go, then. We're getting ready. The last few cars are moving into line. Mark Walker in the middle of the front row, who won here twice last year to take the overall victory but the man on pole position julian Majib, was quicker than everybody by quite a margin earlier on in qualifying today if julian can get off the line from the inside from the left as we look at it from this camera then he's going to be in great shape to potentially win when he just missed out last year engines are fired up and the race is underway and again as ever look how slow mark walker is away and he gets passed by duncan pitaway immediately you're on board with that slow getaway machine of Mark Walker, but actually hasn't lost too many places. No, going into the first corner, as double apex at Madwick, he's already picked off one or two on the inside, but a brilliant start from the inside, the pole position, Julian Mishu getting away, but uh, in the background, the top fifth, sixth, in about eighth place actually Mark Walker lost a couple of positions going into Matchwick so the leaders pulling away with Julian Majub leading in that pointy tail of Sunbeam in Indianapolis then a bit of a gap the crits in the mix one two three is doing my count you look for the white helmet with the red stripe up the middle that's Mark Walker he's down in about 10 it's only five laps expect him to be challenging for a podium position yeah but it does make life a little bit hard doesn't it for him to come through when he's got that much work to do. There he is in the middle of that little group. And uh, just going through there as well, Julian Grimwade. He's doing a, a fine job for now. But let's see how they can keep it all together. And it's great to see the Fiat, uh, the big, big Fiat, running up near the front as well at this stage. But it is the pole man, Julian Majub, who has the initial advantage.
Yeah, so there's the Fiat in, in fifth place. Then comes Huey Walker, the son of Mark, in the pale green Delage. And here is Mark Walker with the, uh, like, bike overalls, the full leathers on board. But they're going to have to see what they can do about Julian Majou. Neat and tidy so far, but uh, still waiting for Mark Walker to work his way through. Pick off some of the others. He'll do it down the Lapham Street. No, probably gain one or two positions down there. And he, right on board with him. Back to pass the yellow and red helmet of San Huey. He's got more horsepower. Off he goes down to Lapham. That's one of the two, I promise you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as you said, you can see the, the water tank sitting on the top of the engine there as he heads down. Has to brake a bit earlier, and we've seen this before where he has to actually get on the brakes quite early. Um, just a, a pair of rear brakes to slow it down into the slow bits, but it is so fast once he gets on acceleration, particularly out of the chicane, and you may well see him manage to get back past Walker on the number one machine that's just up ahead of him at the moment. That's the uh, Delage GP Voiture. It's going well. But let's just see the speed as they come down the start-finish straight and down towards Madrid. Yep, yep, he's blasted past the Voiturette. Yeah, past Huey. So the gap between race leaders Julian Majoub and Ben Collins going so well in the number seven Mercedes is four seconds. And just looking to see what the deficit is to Mark Walker. He is 10.3 seconds Look at this, down the he's race going leader. around the, out the outside of Duncan Bitterway and the Fiat. And, uh, yeah, a little point. Uh, but he's through, so Duncan Pitaway's lost the place, but the Fiat running well, a bit smoky, no surprise, that massive, massive engine that's in there, but it's going all right for now. How many litres would you like? 20-something, that'll do the job, aero engine in the Fiat, but now, yeah, definitely Mark Walker hunting down as low as he could behind the bodywork that he doesn't have at all, sitting aboard a car that could not be more rudimentary and made for purpose. Now, the wonderful three sweep through St Mary, brilliant, brilliant drone shots. They've been a fantastic addition this year, particularly with the lowering of the light, but what he's seeing as he goes through there is Julian Maju continuing his escape at the front of the race in the number 18 Sunbeam Indianapolis. Yeah, and he's putting in to, to very good lap time, so I think it's going to be even harder this time to get back to him by the end of this race but let's wait and see as Duncan Pitaway now uh, putting a, a bit of pressure on the Huey Walker but you're back on board with Mark Walker who's been given away it's the battle for third place and no resistance at all from the crit racer that's Neil Goff on board the dark red racer he said come on through you know I'm going to see what I can do about staying with you but he knows in his heart of hearts the answer is he will not be able to stick with the Derek 200 HP there it is the horsepower all being used, harnessed beautifully by Mark Walker, down to Woodcut Corner he goes. So a land speed record machine from that uh, early 1900s, from 1905, is gradually picking its way up. But there's our race leader, Majum, has got quite a comfortable lead. Ben Collins in second place with the Mercedes. And then third position at the moment, Daniil Goff, he started third on the grid, but now they're all being closed up, as we can see by Mark Walker, getting closer and closer. Down the straight they come, and this is where the speed of that machine can really work. On board, and you can see how close he is now. Neil Goff is his next target. Right, the figure we looked at, it was 10.3 seconds from the race leader, Julian Bajou, at the end of lap one to Mark Walker. It's down to eight seconds and coming down all the time, but we've dispensed with 40% of the race distance. Two of the five laps are gone, but still the work's continuing, pumping to get a bit more fuel, get the mixture he wants. So a busy man sitting atop a car that wants to buck him off and working very hard indeed. Well, a beautiful evening here at Goodwood. As the sun beginning to set, we're getting its gorgeous views from the onboard camera. The, the valves in the cylinder heads all bubbling up and down. And uh, he is still making progress. But I do wonder this time whether he's going to have any chance of catching Julian Majov as he has done in the last two races that we have seen from these cars. But he is coming down to a very important section. There's the leader just going through. Now the second, third, fourth group, really all very close. Yeah, and I, I need to sort of point out, I made a bit of an error. Of course, Neil Goff has not been passed. He's still sitting in the crit racer in third position, being attacked by Mark Walker. And the driver who was passed down the lap and straight last time in Hudson Super 6 was James Collins. So that's cleared up. I can still tell you Julian Majub is leading this race by six seconds. And, and look no at resistance. One, two, nothing that Ben Collins could do. Second place <laughs> has become third. And uh, likewise, Neil Goff, third place has become fourth because they knew that Mark Walker would be a man in mission. They knew that he'd make a poor start. We didn't expect him to fall down outside the top ten, but he's been fighting back ever since that charge down to Madwick. But now, is there really going to be an opportunity to close up the big gap to Julian Majub, who so far is doing fantastic effort? Let's look back at this again, Bruce, because uh, he had to go one way and then the other. He had to kind of find the gap.
Yeah, on the straight that's not straight, through the through the kink, he's already, I guess the kink, and he's already around the outside of Ben Collins, but Ben was very, very aware, which is extraordinary to be able to do so. As he went through the second part of Lavin, little glance across, and he could sort of sense the trajectory that Mark Walker was going to be on in the Derrick as he gave chase. So, getting as low as he can while he sits atop that uh, land speed record car from 1905, car number 200, all engine, no body, and a lot of fun. Yeah, now he was uh, not quite three seconds faster than Majub. We've got two laps to go, and the gap is over six seconds. So in theory, it's going to be tough, and there's some back markers to get past as well. Well, that's the, that's the changing factor of the whole thing, because Julian Majub now lapping the back markers. He's dispensed with the ones at the back of the pack, and he just should be OK. But we said that not once but twice last year. Twice he was overhauled. Well, very quickly, uh, Mark is also making up that ground. Mark Walker, the other car's keeping well out of his way as he tries to go for another victory. And uh, that chase is on, but is he really going to have enough time? He's got to throw this machine around, and it's wonderful to watch. You get to see everything on board with Mark. And, and what's so great at this point as Mark Walker goes down the sun low in the sky as he chases down into Lavin is he's got clear line of sight to Julian Majoub. There may be some other cars coming between them, but we've got, what, one and a quarter laps remaining. The gap between them on this, actually, so far on this lap, Julian Majoub has eked out a tiny bit, but that's because he found the traffic where it was kindest. And some of the other machines that are making their way around here, and that's what's so enjoyable is seeing such a, a variety of of cars from different periods that are all competing. The Bianchi, the 1906, the red machine we were just looking at, Luke Roberts, and then this, uh, the number 34, which is uh, at the uh, Oakland Romano. That's a, a lovely machine as well that had a tyre come off last year. The Fiat is still running pretty well at this stage. Yeah, Lots just a few places, isn't it? Yeah, but it sort of stayed there or thereabouts. Once Mark Walker went through, they were at about sixth position at the time, and he, he stayed there. And I must say, actually, you just mentioned Julian Grimwade, his first race in an Edwardian car. He's in the Romano, but he's just outside the top ten, and it's certainly a different proposition to the to the Fraser Nashes in which he's been competing. The lead gap has come down to 4.4 seconds, so that's looking good because we're on to the last lap looking good for Majub, I have to say it looks to me as though this time Walker is really not going to be quite close enough when they get to the chicane like he was last year but we will just have to wait and see and there are still the back markers being overtaken by the cars are down to sixth place in fact the driver just outside the top six is Huey Walker the the green car, the red and yellow helmet, the uh, Delage that uh, qualified very nicely, thank you, but uh, the Huacharette uh, may yet pick off Duncan Pitaway, but really all eyes on Mark Walker in the, the Darren car number 200, chasing, chasing up ahead, he can see the pointed tail of the Sunbeam Indianapolis, surely he can't pull it in, he must be about, <laughs> he's brought it down from 4.5 seconds to, it looks like it's about three seconds as he goes through St Mary's, look at the gap. Can he pull it down? Last time he did, not once, but twice in the five lap race. Oh, gosh, even going into lap, he's carrying more speed. But is Julian Maju just controlling this at the front? He needs a cushion. He didn't have a cushion last year, and this year he's just potentially got enough of one. It is amazing. I mean, the difference between these two machines, you've got a 20-litre difference in engine size between the car that's leading and the one that's by 20,000 cc of, of, of engine capacity. And he is catching, look, he is getting closer, but I'm not sure. I mean, we've seen how he's been able to do it on the last lap several times. He is getting closer, and there is a car up ahead, isn't there? Uh, there certainly is, just trying to pick out who it, who it is, and will, it, will they be able to catch it and pass it between Woodcut and the chicane? If not, it's going to be just in the wrong place. In the wrong place for who? That's the question. And it is passed just before the chicane, so Julian Majuk will be thinking, thank you my lucky stars surely i can't be attacked by mark walker uh, it was great to see that kept out the way that was the monarch he's looking in the mirror you can see he knows how how rapidly mark comes up this last bit but this time he can celebrate having missed out so fractionally last year in both races when he was passed by mark on the final lap this time he has held out and you know a one arm salute is good and two is a whole lot better and the sun was low in julian's face you could see the beam on his face as he pulled into magic and in behind very close huey walker chasing to get try and get past the fear it's Whoa. very tight indeed duncan pitomy ends up going a little wide huey walker carrying a little more momentum this is the battle to pit place over James Collins. Oh, something. James Collins has missed out because he was fighting there as well for fifth place. And something's happened to James as he's come out of the chicane. What a shame for him. He's dropped down a couple of places as a result. And Duncan Pitaway holds on, manages to get that fifth place with the with the fear. So, oh, I do feel for James, though. That was a little bit unfortunate, wasn't it? Yeah, you do all the hard yards. But you know what? We, we just come to expect 
exciting racing with the SF Edge. You know, any car being driven when a driver's sitting on top looks a bit more exciting than when you're down low. You can see everything the drivers are doing, but to have one of your front runners fall outside the top 10 and yet still come back and come back and come back and then just end up short. Last year, he didn't end up. He just came through to pit. But this year, no doubt when we get down to Julian Majoub, as the last of the finishers, here's the Romano coming through, Julian Grimway on board. They'll have had fun. They get to do it all over again on Sunday, but I can't wait. Julian Majoub will be popping and banging when he gets into the collection area. Fastest lap of the race, of course, the final lap, and of course it was Mark Walker. Closed down to 2.2 seconds, and yet, what a great starter for them. Yeah, it was very good, but Majoub must be so delighted. There he is, with the Sunbeam, to have actually held on this time uh, with the Sunbeam uh, GP chassis. Sunbeams uh, raced at Indy in the 1913s uh, and finished in fourth place. They raced against it in 1914 and had a best of seventh place. A couple of non-finishes at Indy in 1915. And uh, then they were back in uh, 1916 with it, with, with this 4.9-litre engine, actually, that he's running uh, here. And came home in fourth in a race won by uh, Dario Resta in a Peugeot that time. So the Sunbeam, this Sunbeam Indianapolis uh, has a lot of history of racing over in America. And this time it has taken the victory here today. So uh, for Julian, who is a very regular a uh, Goodwood racer. This is a delightful moment, as you said, both hands in the air. Both hands are great to see the applause from people in this evening sunlight. Still got one more race to complete the Saturday action. But there's the biggest smile of the day. Julian Majou coming in in his uh, 1916 Sunbeam.